We're interrupting this program in order to begin our regularly scheduled broadcast. Thanks for watching the Lit TV Network. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to Kim's World. I'm your host, Kim Warner, and I have Alana Wynn with me today and Twyla Prendo. Where are you ladies at? We're here. Hey, hey, hey. Woo, here how in North Carolina. Huh? Right, how are you all doing? Doing great. Thank Good. you for asking. Yes. All right. Thank you for having us here today. Mm -hmm. Sure. It's a wonderful thing to have you here today. You're queens above queens. Uh, however, Alana, introduce yourself and give uh, the audience your, your title, your business, what you do. Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Alana Wenz. I am a brand and product marketing strategist. Um, I do brand and product marketing strategy for uh, credit union. Uh, aside from that, I also um, am a journalist and outside of work, my full time job, rather, I um, do lots of creative endeavors, lots of creative things from writing, production, producing, filming, photography, all things of the sorts um, for various pursuits. Wonderful. Sounds great. Um, I love that part of you as well. Um, Twyla, tell them about you and what you do. Of course, I am Twyla Prindle. I am with Cash Kids. I'm the executive director and found, founder. And at Cash Kids, what we do is we teach K-12 through to students how to master money skills early so they can lead struggle-free lives. Thank you for having me. Um, do me a favor and tell them where you're located uh, because your program is so expansive and um, you've done uh, over two or three decades of work in creating it. Mm -hmm. them well, I am local here in Jacksonville, Florida. However, however um, my students span across the globe, you can say, because we do have virtual programming and we also have virtual reality programming. So beautiful, beautiful. All right. Um, let's see where we're going to go from here. So you guys know that, um, and I'm talking to the audience, I wrote a book, um, Shadow Work, Creating the Tree of Life and how it takes us back home. On the back end, um, I have been working with people from Africa for a couple of years, which takes us into a conversation that um, I often have with these young ladies and others um, that's rather deep. It's a, a conversation that many people negate to speak about. Um, it is racism, but I want to take us into the Bible. Um, first, when I look at the writings that I've done and I go into the tree of life, what we find is, again, always, I'm always talking about going within. And the reason why is because Jesus told us that the kingdom of God was within. So this is not religion. This is a practice on how to change your life. And when we talk about slavery and the United States and it's still impacting us, what we want is to follow uh, the uh, protocol of, of Jesus because he was leading people within themselves for self-discovery. So my book, um, Shadow Work, Creating the Tree of Life, will help you in so many ways for those that are into self-development, you know, and inner awareness and, you know, developing your, your God and your goddess to know that if God is your father, then that means you have to grow up as an adult, right? So you see, hint, hint, get into some of my classes. I have moon therapy every Thursday. Now, um, going into the conversation, the chakras that we're going to relate to when I'm speaking with these young ladies is the heart, which is related to the green chakra. Um, you can look it up. Um, you also have emerald uh, gems and you have gems in the Bible that define, and we talked about that earlier on, that define the temple building. Um, the throat chakra is um, for your truth. It's you speaking your truth and not um, holding that truth in anymore, being um, passive aggressive or having feelings of explosion. If you don't speak your truth, that's where that comes from, a block uh, throat chakra. And uh, the crown chakra, where we are able to imagine our uh, self in the presence of God and in a temple that God would build for us rather than what we've been given. All right. 
All right, so ladies, this is where we begin with. Um, I, I, I bring in the scriptures. I love to mesh them. Um, we've had, you know, um, Twyla and Easy on uh, speaking about stock market and all of that, which is a, a wonderful thing. It's still focused on self development and the need mm -hmm. for us to change our minds and look at how we can create wealth from within because he gave us the analogy of being able to work from home as so uh, Twyla has given us. So here Romans 10 and 9, the, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that the Lord Jesus um, and shalt, I mean the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And, you know, I remember repeating that and it did something for me years later, um, but it was in me. It started taking place in residence in my life because I started seeing changes after I made that confession. Um, the heart hears a, a seed. They that have ears, let them hear what the church is saying. And so here we are having, we're having church, we're having self-development conversations that the world can see. Matthew 7 and 21, it says, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my father, which is in heaven, you see, and there's a connection. And yes, you know, we can't get into what the connection is in 30 minutes, but it's there in the Bible. So when we go there, when we look at the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I look at slavery in the United States having a profound lasting impact on the black population, leading to a multitude of issues that continue to affect the African-American community today. These issues are complex and multifaceted, stemming from both historical and contemporary factors. In my field of work, I have done the studies, and I believe that it goes back into the genetics. Even the Bible tells us that there is, in, in our biology, environmental. The Bible tells us that our, our generations of the forefathers had been cursed. We had been working out some, um, some issues here. You can change the words, but the thing is, is that I've handed, on some, handed over some things to my children. We're handing over things to their children. And as I bring Twyla into the conversation, and Alana, Alana has, I mean, Twyla has created something that brings in um, the ability for children to exit from poverty, from being brought up in the mind of lack. Financial uh, classes for children are so not just wonderful, but when we look at what we didn't have, I stop and I say, let us as you know, a nation um, or a global nation uh, look and say, what are we really doing here? I am not judging anybody, but I'm saying that more people would like to go out and give to um, the, the Air Jordans. Okay, if you wanna buy them, that's fine. But let's make sure that our kids know how to read and write, and let's make sure that they know how to purchase Air Jordans when they become adults. You got a lot of people living in poverty that want Air Jordans, but they can't get it or them. Am I saying that this is right or wrong, that you buy Air Jordans or that you don't? I'm not. I'm looking at an issue, an issue that goes into a deep aspect that many people don't look at, which means that I'm going to say that we were trained to be consumers. Consumers buy what they can't afford. Now, I'm not here to tell anybody what they can't afford because if we have bills, if Bill has become our master, then where is God at? Okay? So then bringing Twyla in, I look at the economic disparities. Let's talk about that. Well, there's so much to say. First, I want to say that, you know, you're right. Um, I think that it, the issue is so layered and so deep and I think that although we are consumers, I do feel like it's because it's the only freedom 
that we really have, the only control that we have. So, you know, we like to sometimes dress nice or have the nice car because we have experienced so much oppression and so many things um, that are not favorable in a run of an everyday life. But that's the one thing that you can have and feel good about yourself. You know, you think about um, probably our parents and grandparents, you know, they they worked in these places and they came home, you know, tired and, you know, you treated like the scum of the earth, for the lack of a better word. But then you go to church and you look nice. People telling you you look good. You got a little position. You're a deacon or a deaconess. And you have something that makes you feel good. And I think um, that's part of it as well. As far as the disparities, yes, um, I see all the time where, you know, just I, I just think I mentioned it to you about a week or two ago. One of my students had on a nice pair of shoes. And I was like, oh, those are really nice. He was like, oh, yeah, I paid $600 for these. I'm like, say what? I did not know Jordan's cost that much. But, um, you know, we got into a whole conversation of, you know, other things that can happen. But also, you know, as parents, sometimes because we grew up and we didn't have that a lot of times we want, we go extra or do the extra for our kids because we don't want our kids to feel the way that we felt or experience maybe some of the shame or embarrassment that we felt when we were growing up and not having the things that, you know, the popular kids have. But the thing is that going back to what you said, as far as kids need to be able to read and write, um, first, some type of way it has to be address because um i think a lot of times parents or people in general we live in a world of that we are familiar with and what i mean by that is that parents feel like a lot of times schools are the way they were and, and, and they're not really thinking about it or doing it on purpose i don't believe i think our frame of reference is our frame of reference so we think about school we automatically go back to how school was when we were in school and school is not like that anymore, not at all. And so a lot of times I hear parents say, oh, that's the school job. They don't know that's the school job. So I like to tell them, okay, how many kids you have? A lot of times it might be two or three. Okay, well, there are times when you can't handle your two or three, but you want the teacher to handle these 22, 25 kids that they have. You know, everyone has to do their part, but the parents need to know that it's not the school's job. Learning starts at home. Alana. Amen. Learning starts at home. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I'm just thinking, too, because I've seen, and it could just be me, but I feel like kids these days are um, really into fashion at a much younger age than even I remember being into fashion. And, you know, I I worked in fashion in industry. You know, I had a love for fashion. I still do. But, you know, with uh, spiritual advancements and things of that knowledge, you kind of shed those material um, you kind of shed that material weight, if you will. But with some of the younger kids, I've just noticed that because of social media and constantly assume, consuming TikTok and YouTube at like the age of five and six, you have these kids who are seeing, you know, kids who are much older than, than them and they want to dress like them. And so they're getting into, um, you know, the Jordans and some of these things at a much earlier age than I would say previous generations did. Um, and not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but I do think that because of all that overconsumption, there isn't a lot of time spent on the fundamentals like reading and writing. And um, there have been studies too that have shown that because of the pandemic and some of those years that we, you know, kind of were, you know, stuck at home and things of that nature, you have a lot of kids who miss some of those fundamental steps like learning phonics and learning how to, you know, kind of draw or trace letters. Um, and I think that because of those couple of years, unfortunately, we are seeing some kids who perhaps have low self-esteem who maybe feel like they are unable to succeed in school. And what I will say about that whole pandemic situation as well is that depending on the household and the situation, you didn't necessarily have parents who were able to dedicate you know, eight hours to working with their children and ensuring that they were understanding or getting all those fundamentals like the math basics and the phonics and the, you know, writing and things, you know, things like that. And that's understandable. And I think that that's also 
um, a disparity in itself. The fact that you have some households that, you know, had stay at home moms or, or fathers or, or, or family members within the household who were able to dedicate the time to work with the children, whereas other um, households didn't have that sort of ability or grace. And I do think that there, um, you know, unfortunately, there might have been some situations where, you know, some kids weren't able to get um, to kind of get those basics, but they were still able to advance and kind of progress from one grade to the next, which is great. But without those fundamentals, I think we're going to kind of start seeing the effects of that. Um, and I do think that it's, I don't, I don't necessarily think that having a love for fashion and clothes is a bad thing. I think that it is a bit of a creative outlet from the stress and the weight of the world, which is why I definitely can understand our ancestors wanting to dress nice and wanting to feel good and feel like, you know, they have two pennies and two nickels to rub together just from everything they've been through. You know, it's, it's, um, it's hard to explain, but I can definitely see it being an outlet for many people. I think where the issues come in is, um, not knowing, how can I say this? It's almost like having the, the, those materials be your God and, and kind of allowing those materials to own you and allow those clothes to wear you instead of you wearing the clothes. You know what I mean? I think that's kind of the difference. I don't know if we're teaching children or our people enough that, um, we have more power than what we probably think that we do in this space in terms of consumerism. So if we were to really hone in that power and hone in our, our skill sets of, of understanding, um, understanding, um, you know, those, those, the, the, the numbers, finances, things of that nature, how to, how to, how to, um, if we had more control when it comes to spending, I think that it would take us a lot farther and we would have more leveraging power in the consumerism space. Yeah. Um, I mean, you guys are so like awesome. And what you're saying is so relevant. The control of finances and on a spiritual level for me, I wouldn't be able to present some of the issues the way that I do if I hadn't had God speak to me. When you look at Deuteronomy um, 18, I mean, eight and 18, he says, it is, it is me, God, who gives you the power to obtain wealth. Yet we, in many cases, are not teaching um, our children that because they see us taking them to the store buying $600 shoes, right? And you could go deeper into the shoes. I can't say that anybody does not deserve it. But again, I go back to the first um, conversation that I began with, which was why won't we teach our children how to make the money to fund their uh, their attire? Because when we look at them lacking as adults in funding their attire, and this is not everyone, but this is a lot of African Americans, and we're we're pointing that. Um, directive there to wake us up that as Alana and Twyla brought in, our freedom to dress is what we had. We even contemplate whether we should say certain things here. We, we contemplate what we should think here when there is a freedom of speech. But the, the reason why we contemplate what we should say concerning slavery and the economic oppression is because many people have gotten tired and they say, well, nothing is gonna happen. There's solutions. It's just that people won't think outside of the box. One of the outside of the box things that um, I present is that we have a younger generation that needs the, um, the focus. It is not really on us to be a focus. That's why we're here, because if I could teach you how to meditate or actually get you to buy a book on meditation and you really put yourself into it, the feelings that you have, the anger, the hate would change. And just for instance, and then your outside demeanor would change. There's an energy that flows within that would change the dynamics of you. And even your relationships begin to change for the better. I mean, I know they can document that because they've been on that walk with me. So when we look at economic disparity, I don't just want to talk to you and say that 
we have a disparity. I want you to know that the disparity is uh, the lack that we carry within. That lack has to be filled up, as God says, fill my cup. Fill, he says, I, he'll fill our cup. Fill, he'll fill the cup overflowing. You know, Psalms 23 is, is a mouthful. I done gave you some prosperous script, scriptures today. And the scriptures is your meditation uh, of the heart and the mind. So whatever disparities, you know, when we go and we look at the writings, what we put together, the slavery entrenched a system of economic inequality. The inequality means that just looking at what Twyla and, and Alana said, the freedom to dress, that gave us the endorsement that if we can go and buy something and make us look pretty, then we're going to keep on dressing up this outside and not dress up the inside. I say get your inside right because the temple of God is what the Bible expounds on. That's your spiritual uh, fortification. When you wear some blue jeans that looked horrible uh, a year ago after spiritual practice for a year, you are gonna feel great in them same jeans because your inside glow has began to manifest. It's that candle of light. But the thing about this is, is passing it on to the children. Even here we have cultures. We have cultures. Let me let me stop. I don't want to go there. We can go into that another time. But they they blend together. We're still fighting each other. I don't want to fight with you. I just want to get that word that God has for everyone out there, which is to be ye of good courage. Be encouraged. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The economic disparities, um, Slavery entrenched a system of economic inequality, I'm sorry, that disadvantaged black individuals and hindered their ability to accumulate wealth. All right. Just say it, it is what it is. Some people say it is what it is. I say it is what it is, but it can be something else if you begin to work with it. Um, even after slavery ended, discriminatory practices such as uh, segregation, uh, redlining and unequal access to education and employment opportunities persisted, leading to significant wealth gaps between blacks and whites. We know if we go into our schools, and Twyla is right here, me and her talk about the schools or education. So I'm going to let her go in on that one. Oh, man, like which part? I mean, it's so much like going back to what Alana was saying about the pandemic and the gap. Um, most of a lot of our kids were already behind before the pandemic. So right. you add a pandemic and now they're super behind. Our students, um, fourth and fifth grade, just finished a book that will be releasing actually tomorrow. And um, this was the first year that I was looking at the writings and I was like, what? is this you know so it was a lot of work that had to be done when it wasn't like that in previous years and i think a lot of times if you are um a parent and like you said you know we what we should do but a lot of times we're we don't know what we don't know yes you do want to address the inside yes you do want to be a better person but you know a lot of times we don't have a role model or, you know, we're fortunate that we're in this space and we have one another to talk to, to, um, as you say, iron sharpens iron. But a lot of people don't have that or know how to access that. Um, and then when you when you think about even counseling or therapy or something of that nature is so taboo in our community that there are many people. I mean, even well educated people who you would think know better that are against you know, counseling. So it's, um, it's a battle. Like I said, it's, it's so much I can say, but I know Alana probably wants to add some things too. And then I can just come behind her after that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, six minutes left. So you guys say, and we'll be back on next week. Good conversation. Go ahead. Okay. Oh my gosh. I'm like, there are so many topics. I'm like, yeah. oh, going to hell should we stick on education? Well, I mean, I guess to round things out, we could probably stick we could probably stick to education and maybe come back and follow up on some of the other topics. Well, yeah, because I gotta go back to that segregation. 
Okay. I, I never believed in it. That's I gotta. I, I got to say, you know, I made a mistake when I uh, text John the other day. I meant integration. We we fell by the wayside when we started letting other people teach our children. OK, go ahead, Alana. Oh, oh my gosh. So that was something I wanted to touch on, too. So, um, oh, my gosh. I'm like, we only have a few minutes. What I will say is that and this is something that we can follow back up on. Um, just from the stories that I've heard in terms of integration, um, when schools were desegregated back in the day, I was told that, you know, a lot of times, though, you know, a lot of the black kids who were getting moved into these other schools didn't always have the same textbooks as their counterparts or the teachers might have been fighting against their own biases. You know, just because the schools were desegregated, desegregated didn't make, mean that these teachers were automatically like no longer racist. You know what I mean? So in terms of that education gap, I think it even started back then and, and obviously before then too but i think that a lot of people have put this unicorn fairy dust on um desegregation in the school system and i don't think that it was quite as seamless as a lot of people think i think there uh -huh. were a lot of children who got left behind during that uh, no kid no child left behind okay uh, yeah we got to go back into this here and I look see, at our I see education. I think each topic is its own show because it, it sure is. it's so much like you, everything that Alana was saying is so true. Like, I think what happened is we, we wanted, and, and this happens on all levels. We wanted what they had. We wanted to be equal, but you know, equal looks different to everyone. So although we were integrated or segregated or whatever you want to call it, you know, it just didn't work the way it was supposed to work. But show me in history where anything that we have fought for or plans for it to work a certain way has worked that way. It doesn't. And that's why I always say, you know, there's a, I always talk about this book. It's this book called The Whiteness of Wealth. I mean, you guys have to read it if you get a chance. But it just breaks everything down how, you know, it's just the, it's just systematic racism. And it's like, you darn if you do, darn if you don't. Like, I, I remember talking to Miss Kim before, just talking about, you know, oh, yeah, we should have our own stuff. But, yeah, like in history, we get our own stuff, we prosper, we're doing good, and they're going to burn it down. Give them your information, and we'll pick up next okay, week. Well, I am um, Twyla Prindle. Um, you can reach me at um, cashkids.org. That's cash with a K. Or um, on Instagram, cashkids. That will be... Um, of course, K-A-S-H-K-I-D-S-S, -S -S, so we two S's on the end, and that's the best way to contact me there. You can reach me at alana.wins at gmail.com, A-L-A-N-A dot W-I-N-N-S at gmail.com. If you have any questions, thoughts, inquiry, inquiries, don't know why words are hard right now. <laughs> um, also, to my Instagram, ha Instagram handle is at two, the number two, ends wins so to the letter n w i n n s and yeah just reach me and let me know if you have any uh questions or if you uh, want to collaborate so this was great miss kim it was great okay so we're picking up with that momentum <laughs>